Because you have listened to the Doctor's theme origin piece from episode 25, you're intimately familiar with the motive's simple four-note rising structure. It must be said that if Simpson had composed a fully realized and orchestrated theme, he might have been stuck endlessly repeating it. Because the motive was so simple, it was inherently flexible, which Simpson creatively exploited to the full. I have already discussed the final musical moments from the Santarin experiment used in the first movement. There are two other uses of the doctor's motive in the same story. To start this second movement, it was better to use the second of the two from the scene just after Harry's sabotage results in the Santaran's death. As the doctor explains to Harry and Sarah what happened, the music directly harkens back to the Ark in Space. The repeated E naturals from which a rising horn line outlines E7 flat 5 make a slightly more traditional sound than the quintal harmony found in All's Well That Ends. The harmony that follows is less constant rhythmically and resolves to more traditional minor and major chords in contrast with the pulsing suspended chords heard throughout the first movement. The progression alternates between A minor with added ninth and B flat major with the dominant seventh G sharp in the timpani. A reminder of the doctor's motive answers the harmony. Over the A minor, the left hand reaches over the right to play a chromatic melody starting on the dissonant major third and resolving on the dissonant minor sixth. Juicy sound indeed. Over the B flat seven harmony, two different phrases outline a mode of melodic minor, which features the sharp 11 E natural. The next segment is from slightly earlier in the story when the doctor tells Harry that he plans to find out what's behind all this, after which there is a scene without dialogue of the Doctor trekking across the rocks. Coming off what we just heard, this is a very inventive version of the Doctor's motive and is the first of many examples of creativity that can sprout from simplicity. There are three elements to this version, a piano and vibraphone melody in the center of the music, supporting horn ensemble harmony underneath, and a high-pitched synthesizer tremolo above. With so much going on, the left hand was given the challenge of playing both harmony and melody, and although it isn't performed like this in the original, the smoothest way to incorporate them in my arrangement is an arpeggiated rolling of the chords from low to high, with the melody taking over. The melody and harmony travel far in these eight measures, but begins and ends in B-flat minor. The doctor's motive is used as a starting point, but the melody soon embarks on its own brief journey. After two measures of B-flat minor, the melody quite within the key, the next two-measure harmony is a surprising D-flat 7 flat 5, with the melody very chromatic, eventually settling on the ninth E-flat. Before the melody resumes for the second half, the horn ensemble interjects a falling phrase in thirds, outlining the whole tone scale suggested by the harmony. The B natural in the bass of that passage becomes the dominant leading to the tonic of the next chord, E minor. The melody is very colorful, chromatically swaying through the minor sixth, minor seventh, and major seventh. The harmony starts to move a little faster now, with the E minor rising to F minor in the next measure. The melody is again colorful, using notes of B natural, the sharp 11, and D natural, the major 6th. You'll notice here that the melody is over an octave away from the harmony, so the left hand has to stick quite a landing. The next harmony is very colorful but ambiguous. On the surface, the foundations resemble the D flat 7 flat 5 harmony from a few measures ago, but this is definitely not whole tone in nature. It seems based on half diminished harmony, but without the characteristic minor third. The melody above combines with it to suggest augmented harmony, but the D in the bass makes this harmony seem like a hybrid. 
The steady tremolo in the heights of the piano subtly adds to, and sometimes subverts, the harmony below. Over B-flat minor, the sharp 11, E natural. Over D-flat 7 flat 5, it provides the major third, F natural. The F continues under the change to E minor, a surprising minor ninth. Over F minor, the major ninth, G natural, carrying over to the D hybrid, becoming the eleventh, whereupon it unites with the melody for the double octave crash, back down to B flat minor six. The final bass note, B flat, had to come a beat later due to physical limitations. As you might suspect, this is easily the most complex segment of the entire piece. The next brief segment comes from part six of Genesis of the Daleks, the subject of my last two episodes. The scene begins as the camera pulls out from the door of the Dalek incubation room, the air heavy with unsettled sounds from within, and the tension is sustained for four measures of the same harmony based on another mode of melodic minor. The melody is the original Doctor's Motive, transposed up a half step from the first movement. A characteristic element of the melodic minor scale is that for five notes in a row, it mimics the whole tone scale. Those are the five notes that Simpson uses in the organ and muted horns. Starting from two notes a whole step apart, the harmony gets thicker and thicker as the horns descend, adding more notes. After three measures, the melody breaks its pattern and rises in whole tones to conclude this tense phrase. With the doctor emerging from the incubation room preparing to blow it up, the music immediately lightens in tone. The horns and vibraphone take over, supported by contrabass clarinet. We get three identical measures, differing only in dynamics, of the D Dorian mode, resembling a common 2-5 chord progression. The horns rise in thirds in the shape of the doctor's motive. After Simpson's break, his next assignment was to score the second story of season 13, Planet of Evil, and the first full version of the doctor's theme comes at the conclusion to part four, when the doctor returns to the Morestran ship with Professor Sorensen safe and sound. This and the next two segments heard were part of my first run of transcriptions and featured in my first draft piece. This version is a direct descendant of the music from the Suntaran experiment, firmly in A minor, timpani playing 5-1, up an octave for simplicity, and consistent pulsing of the harmony, though on only the first three beats of each measure. The most important development, however, is a proper melody, an actual 16-bar tune, based on the motive, but not just the motive. Significant also is the parallel harmonic shift used in All's Well, down a whole step, in this case to G minor, at the halfway point of the 8-bar melodic phrase, resolving back up to A minor at the 3 quarter mark. Associated with this progression is the melodic shape featuring the fifth rising up to the root of G minor, then resolving to the fifth of A minor. This progression and melody became a hallmark of the fully developed theme to come. The motive becomes a significant feature of the second eight bar phrase with the melody echoing an octave higher and back and forth. The final phrase ends with a literal recall of the original doctor's motive ending on G sharp. After a short breath, contrasting motive-based music next comes from part one of The Android Invasion, a scene where the doctor, emerging from the woods, finds the unit space installation and enters through a sliding door to address a uniformed guard. A clarinet melody plays with the motive, overshifting harmony from the horns and organ. Until settling on B minor, it goes off on an extended, slightly chromatic outing. Then, with an arpeggiated chord mimicking the sliding door, the clarinet brings the melody to land back on B minor. True, I skipped a story, so now we return to the unforgettable Pyramids of Mars. The core of this movement features six musical cues from this story, heard in chronological order with one important exception. The first comes from part one, when the doctor and Sarah must leave the Scarman house unceremoniously through a window and walk outside while trying to keep out of sight. 
opening with a slight falling line by the horn, in the same way the clarinet did for the Planet of Evil music. This is a pared down version compared to that earlier story. The 5-1 of the timpani alternates rhythm each measure. And the organ's A minor 9 pulsing is all staccato and even alternates a measure of triplet rhythm. The first version of the 8-bar melody is much simpler, featuring long notes from the horn that maintain as the clarinet departs from the unison to play the motive. However, the now recognizable shift down to G minor and the melody that reflects it are intact. Actually, because of the two-bar rhythmic pattern, it sounds like a nine-bar phrase that begins with one silent measure. Or maybe a seven-bar phrase that starts early. Or... Anyway. The next phrase gets only four bars through before it is cut off. And in my arrangement, I jump to part four, as the Doctor and Sarah must chase after Scarman and his robot mummy through a series of chambers under the pyramid on Mars and avoid the booby traps along the way. These are two short, very similar segments heard continuously in the arrangement. Both begin in unison on E natural, the five of A minor, and feature the doctor's motive rising in pitch and dynamic intensity, played by clarinet, horns, organ, and electric bass. Although still based in the key of A minor, in the first phrase there's a sudden shift unexpectedly to a whole tone C sharp major. The doctor is about to thoughtlessly press an innocent-looking button on the wall to open the next door, but pulls his hand away at the last minute, realizing it must be a trap. At that instant, the music drops out, save for the organ and vibraphone, alternating two fearful pianissimo chords. The more delicious of the two is formed using the octatonic scale. As those chords die away, the second of the similar phrases begins more urgently this time. The move to whole tone C sharp, this time a full C sharp 7 flat 5, happens again as a forte surprise by the ensemble, joined with a bright keyboard sound in contrary motion. The horns rise as the keyboard falls. As those chords die away, we jump to later in part four, as the Doctor and Sarah return in the TARDIS to the sarcophagus-filled storeroom. They race out to try and trap Sutek before he arrives on Earth. As soon as the TARDIS doors open and the two run out, we get a suitably frenetic four-measure phrase in 3-4 time. The clarinet has a unison line doubled by the organ three octaves higher, a pleasingly fraught timbre. It begins with mostly chromatic notes over augmented harmony, but as they manically rise, the second half moves into an octatonic scale. Well, I say unison. By my ear, it sounds like the clarinet got two notes wrong in the third measure before correcting themselves. I am almost certain it was meant to be unison, but I have elected to play it as it was recorded. The final landing on B natural allows the music to connect back to a long sequence from part three, as the Doctor and Sarah take their Jellignite to near where the robot mummies are building the rocket and hide it safely. They have no idea yet how they're going to use it to destroy the rocket. Beginning on B minor, the organ pops out staccato triplet notes in the whole tone scale that resolve to the third of B minor. As the vibraphone joins it, the horns split off in contrary motion, and with a low, synthesized C minor chord, muted horns announce the doctor's motive, the major sixth and the major seventh outlining the melodic minor scale. The organ and vibraphone, together with the horn, respond in unsettled fashion. There follows very similar phrases in C-sharp minor and D-sharp minor, the latter extending the melody with inserts again by the vibraphone and organ. Now, the harmony begins to rise more urgently from E minor as the melody descends through nervous dissonances, eventually settling on an assertive G minor major 9. After two uncertain solos by the vibraphone, then the bass clarinet, we continue in G minor 
with a new rendering of the motive, complete with organ and percussion, staccato pulses, and held horn bass notes. The parallel shift down to F minor and back is featured here as well. The segment winds down with another parallel shift up to A minor, with some unison notes leading down to B flat. We jump back to part four for the final Pyramids of Mars segment, Sutek has been defeated forever, but the portal explodes, and the house will shortly be engulfed in flames. With history preserved, the Doctor and Sarah retreat at speed to the TARDIS. With the explosion, we are shocked out of the relative quiet of the previous segment, as A natural collapses into the dissonance of a half-step B-flat and the tritone E-flat. At this stage, the music resolves, suggesting the key of D. Minor or major is not yet clear. This is a change that will affect the presentation of the Doctor's theme from here on. However, to start with, all we get is the staccato pulsing of the organ above a held clarinet note. After shifting from D with added second, no third, there's a brief shift to E flat minor six. But upon returning to the D harmony, the motive emerges bright as can be in the organ and vibraphone, now confirming its modulation to D as well. The D natural melody note holds as the harmony shifts back to E flat minor. Then the melody dives down over an octave and finishes with another motive that ends on the same F sharp as the clarinet. As we say goodbye, a final D version of the motive is heard solo and pianissimo. For the penultimate segment, we jump ahead to the theme rendering heard at the end of The Mask of Mandragora, the opening story of season 14. The version heard here is very much like the final version we will hear starting in season 15, with its shift to the key of D minor confirming its evolution from the original. Notable also is the shifting of the harmony's color note from the major ninth to the minor seventh. With a timpani intro, Simpson sets this version like a renaissance dance, appropriately for the story, and the oboe melody completes the effect. After one eight-bar phrase, the oboe gives us a solo send-off. However, for the true coda of the second movement, we must return one last time to the android invasion, for the gorgeous, subdued murmuring at the end of part four. Unlike literally any of the other clips I've transcribed here, the original recording for parts three and four still exists today. Some clips were released on the 50th anniversary collection and posted on YouTube, and luckily for me, one of them was this gorgeous ending. I was so grateful to have a clean recording as my source for this perfect ending. The segment is essentially an organ solo with bubbly timbres for the harmony bobbing up and down in the middle register. Because Simpson may have had foot pedals available to do three parts at once, my right hand must do double duty, asserting the low bass note of each harmony before reaching back up to play the melody. Beginning on D minor seven, the doctor's motive emerges for one last phrase, brightening up the harmony from the D natural minor of the previous segment to D Dorian. The harmony shifts to a slightly darker B flat dominant nine, with the melody directly, maybe unintentionally, recalling music from the Suntaran experiment. The next harmonic shift brightens things distinctly with a suspended sound of B minor 7 over an E bass. As this melodic phrase resolves to F sharp, so does the harmony to F sharp major. Because we can't be perfectly happy, the vibraphone inserts a final comment featuring dissonant notes on the minor 9th and the major 7th, perhaps hinting at the octatonic scale. I love this ending, but you know what a romantic I am. So then, from humble beginnings, a four-note motive emerged. Over roughly 18 months of Doctor Who scores, Simpson began attaching that motive to Baker's Doctor. The first inkling of its potential as a theme came almost immediately. 
and further versions featuring a shift in harmony to A minor came in season 13. By the beginning of season 14, the theme had almost emerged in its mature form, modulated to D minor. But once again, the motive was so simple, it could be used as the seed for any music Simpson desired. Strangely, after The Mask of Mandragora, the Doctor's theme and motive essentially disappeared from Simpson's scores for over a year. I guess the happiest way to think about that was that Simpson wove a chrysalis around his theme and let it sit for a while to emerge fully formed in mid-season 15. But that is a story for when you're a little older. Thank you very much for watching episode 28, part two of the Dudley Simpson is Doctor Who project. Next time, the score to character development. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. See you then.